being uprisen. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Slam Tilt, which was an AGA exclusive game developed by Liquid Design and published by Houston's 21st Century Entertainment in 1996. game begins with a flashy introduction sequence and we can see a nice font, very futuristic, has been used as well as some great thematic music as well and this opens the way towards Slam Tilt. Slam Tilt is one of those greatest pinball games on the Amiga, it's on the long line of the 21st Century Entertainment releases from Houston, although this wasn't released by the same guys. And it's great to see all those names and I have no idea where they come from, I think it could be Norway, but you can see Slam Tilt by Liquid Design. I think this is also some terrific music. Amongst the options you can see that we can turn on the auto high res and that will switch to high resolution if we have a multi ball session and I think you can also press the space bar to switch between those high and low resolutions. And in this game, you can also check out the high scores from the main menu. And you can see I've had a bit of a go with this. I'm not amazing at any pinball games. And you can see almost 64 million on the Pirates, which is pathetic. And slightly higher scores on the other tables. So we'll be giving this a go today. And we'll see if we can beat any of those scores. Maybe we will, but probably we won't. Because this was recorded after the Lemon Amiga competition, where we actually played this game. And I really do think that these pinball tables rely on luck. So let's rely on luck for the first table, this is Mean Machines. Mean Machines, this is a driving game. And unfortunately you can see, as soon as I got a bonus, I died. So the space in between those flippers, you might notice, doesn't have a pin in the middle of it. So if your ball disappears down the middle of the table, unfortunately there isn't much you can do. And you can tilt the game by pressing one of the keys. Again, it could be the space bar. That's a great feature that we can play this in high resolution and it means that we can actually follow the ball more of the way around the table. slam tilt it requires a little bit of luck and if you do have the luck then that's great it means you can get through these tables and it means you can score some mega points and on this particular table there is a ramp over to the far left that you can see has a, a formula one car or an indy car in there and during the competition run i like to hook it in there and get loads of points and i don't think i managed to get in there once on this playthrough 
and you can see various ramps as well. There are two great ramps on this level, and they will award us accumulative points if we manage to loop the ramps a few times. And Slam Tilt, as you can see, has an impressive palette. It is slightly darker than most of the pinball games. That means it's less cartoony, more kind of polished and more real to a real pinball table, and that all adds to the depth of this thing. You can see we've been playing for mere seconds and I've already got 133 million, so it is possible to accumulate some amazing scores on these tables. dreams and pinball fantasies there are a few missions to unlock on the tables and these missions will take you on to different places but usually they will involve something which appears on the heads up display the readout at the very top of the screen and this will be some kind of a mini game in this one you've already seen the drag race but there are quite a few mini games in the game and on this table i think it's best to start the engine first of all and then try to loop around the top right side of the play area and that kind of accumulates the speed that we're going and i think on this table you're supposed to accumulate miles we can always press the escape key and we can retry however many times that we like and in this game it's great that we can do that you can see that the play field is split up into a few areas we have a number of ramps we have the central midfield where we can light up a number of lights and that all spells something out we can go into the corners of the play area and we can also gain a skill shot you can see if you hit the middle area like this and gain that skill shot then that will give you a nice 20 million as soon as we launch that ball so it's great that it does that and there is a, a rebound area on the top of this with these bumpers you can press the flippers and get yourself a times two multiplier so this table is pretty reminiscent of all the other games except for in this one you have to accumulate those miles and drive as quickly as possible Activated an off-road race and you can see that the mole switches to that high resolution when we have a few balls on the screen Unfortunately, it isn't enough to see the whole play area, which is kind of a shame You'll think that they could angle it just a slight bit so that we could see the entire table And that's one thing that is in common with all of these pinball games on the Amiga You basically lean over the entire table and follow the ball as it moves around with your face pressed against the glass so it's not authentic to real table pinball, it's not the right angle, but the speed that this thing moves around could give players a headache, unlike a real pinball table when you just stood there in one spot. Dog Red. Three, two, one. Oh. Quite worked out all the modes in this table, but on main machines you can get a tremendous score. I think my highest is about almost 400 million. And yeah, look at that skill shot 30 million. Can we get it in there? No, we get another chance, but unfortunately, the time ran out. And you can get flat tires and all kinds of things. You can see the mode is in purple, and there are maybe five or six modes that you can select, and then 
I'm not quite sure how to trigger them, but there are missions in this game and that adds a lot to the standard pinball. And I do respect this game mightily because of those missions, but also because of the great layout of the table. The only negative thing I find is the great wide opening yawning gap in the middle of the table where a ball can disappear without hesitation, and that means that we basically reached as fast as we can go on this particular table. We didn't get any speed going, we didn't get any overtakes going, but that's the mean machines and you can really get some tremendous score. So let's select a new table, this is the pirate and in the pirate it's slightly harder because it's slightly harder to hit the things around the table you have to rely on the flippers and also to rely on combos to get the best score When you start to play it you'll think it's a bit vacant and that's what I felt the first time I played it because everything seems to be piled up at the top of the screen and very little in the middle of it apart from a huge gun and the compass which denotes our mission I think and so you can't really do much at this stage but later on when you unlock things you'll have to follow the missions and I'm not quite sure what half these things do but if you loop the ramps of course we'll gain that score First ship sunk as a pirate and that unlocks the minigame where we have to run away from a crocodile and if the ball is lost then we will gain another ball for free that's amazing it means we can carry on and use that in this case you can see the screen moving around to show the whole table if there are all the balls in the same area of the screen and that's tremendous and it means that we can aim for different parts of the screen but of course my hit and hope method means that we just basically lost that multi-ball session and that's not too bad because we've gained some score already. special features in these games and you can have a magna save going on and also a kickback and you can even select what you want in this particular mode and for this obviously it will go for the 10 million because that seems the best one so when I stop pressing these flippers it should hopefully land on that 10 million and we can select that so it's not that hard and it's not as difficult as some bimbo games it's just that it appears that this is a bit more mechanical and a bit less interesting than the rest of the table. third ball and well I just like to say the music is okay I wouldn't say it's the best music in the world and it can get a bit repetitive when you're dying all the time you get to hear the same music all the time and that is slightly annoying but apart from that the sound effects are great and this colour scheme isn't bad either I just wish this table was slightly more exciting than it appears to be As a bonus table this is much better than billion dollar game show and for my money it is quite fun so I really do think that there is a lot to discover 
on this particular treasure map and I'm probably not showing you any of it on this playthrough. It looks like we've enabled adventure and adventure mode, well that means the targets are worth more hopefully and you can see lights flashing away but because of the screen view we can't aim for those lights very well because those aren't on the screen when we flip the ball so it's slightly harder than modern pinball simulators which you can clearly aim for those lights on the shark attack if you run the ramps it will give us some extra time and the more extra time you have to outrun that shark the better but we've just been killed again and sometimes being killed on these pinball tables is the most frustrating thing about them because if you get killed obviously you die and that means you have to start again but luckily if we've run any missions and we've got any lights lit on these tables they will steal it and that means if you've accomplished something it won't be automatically written off the entire table and in this case walk the plank is highlighted let's hope we don't walk the plank in this game and the gold light is lit the bumpers i'm not quite sure what any of these things do because i've obviously never read the manual in this case we missed the ship and that's uh, a mistake that means that we're gonna have to struggle now to well that's the magna save enabled so hopefully we've got a magnetic ball save if we should lose it but with those skills unfortunately it means that we've just lost it so probably reading the manual in this case is helpful and then it explains how to use all of these features this game is it appears to be quite drain happy and even though you can press the alt keys to move the table left and right for my money it doesn't appear to do much every time I do that and sometimes I don't even bother pressing the space bar when you're supposed to be playing the game so most of the time the nudging and offer locks the table if you do it too often so you can't do that much either but there is a lot on offer on this table and surprising depths on offer as well. That's the monkey bonus round and unfortunately we didn't have any monkey magic and that's how I played this table over so I'd say the pirate is perhaps the weakest of the four although that is definitely debatable but you can have a jolly good time on this if you get to grips with the aiming of those ramps and of course if you get used to all these tables practice makes perfect so let's move on to what I consider as the best table of the lot this is the space table, ace of space and this is as far as I know the highest scoring table that I've managed to score on and there is lots going on as you can see so let's try this out Just like the 
the tables, the missions can be locked. In this case, I'm riding a speeder bike. And if you go around certain things, then you'll be able to fire that laser and gain some more score, or gain some more time in the bonus round. And the guy on the screen moves around automatically, depending on where you are aiming for and what you've managed to get. In this case, I've managed to get the kickback. And in this particular table, you're flying a spaceship around, and it means that you're flying around the galaxy. You can unlock extra speed and you can fly around different things, including asteroid fields and different missions like that. You can see if we die, unfortunately, we'll crash into the landscape, and that's a life over. just wandered into that asteroid belt and again we have to aim for the flashing lights to gain some kind of progress on that you can see a, a green flashing light at the top of the screen if we aim for that then we'll blow up an asteroid that's terrific you can also see the red ones as well and the yellow light i think indicates that we've probably got a kickback on that particular area so you can see i'm following unfortunately not the ball lock in this case and the ball is quite light so you don't have to whack it around the table and in some of the pinball games that we'll be taking a look at it's quite heavy but i'm very glad that this ball is metallic but it's quite light and that makes a huge difference to the confidence that you can get playing this game because if it's quite light you can aim for things and having aimed for things you can get on with scoring tons of points and the sound effects are brilliant and the graphics are brilliant as well it's just that you won't get to see many of the graphics because you're concentrating on playing this game and of course your eyes will be darting around that screen so here we are on ball three we've got 108 million already and i'm sure you could get half a billion on this table absolutely no problem but not when things like that happen and that's a drawback of these games they're quite train happy you can see we can move it left and right up and down but that's kind of a problem. So the mode select, I can't really see what, what mode that we're on at the moment, but when you move that middle ramp around in a circle, that increases our speed and hopefully that multiplies our score. Now up to cruise speed and it's possible to aim for that very middle loop ramp religiously and get tons and tons of score doing that as it is also possible to bounce on these things and get an instant x4 so unlike most tables because this thing has all of its ramps and traps clustered together it means that we can have some fun with it and if i time it correctly hopefully i'd be able to use the middle flipper to flip the ball and get even bigger score you see i've managed to lock one ball as well so multi balls are on offer there is a spinner there is an accumulator we're up to times four and we're unlocking some modes and we're unlocking the kickback as well so there's lots on offer lots going on and i'm not quite sure how you activate these missions i think it's the middle one the blue one and that's the second ball locked let's hope we can get another multi ball session on this playthrough In this mode we get three chances, three different balls to get some 
accumulation is going by killing aliens and killing aliens in a computer game is often fun at the best of times so I think that they've basically not copied H.R. Geiger or Giger in this particular case which is a rarity so you can see there's something that looks like a bit like Venom with a Venom tongue we have two balls remaining and again I haven't got a clue what to aim for but there is an orange light there which was lit and so Unfortunately, that's mowed over and we didn't get any score. But this is perhaps my favourite table out of the four, and I think it's brilliant that it gives us four different tables in this game, which are more adventurous and more pushing to the limits, the Amiga, than Pinball Dreams or Pinball Fantasies. But for my money, those two games still have a lot of character and charisma. And even though this game is brilliant and highly polished, I'd still rather play one of those games because I'm so used to the nostalgia of those two games. on the third ball we haven't got anywhere near my high score but at least I can show you how to play it or at least as far as I know how to play it and you can see that it has some areas where the ball disappears and reappears again somewhere else and that's a bit like the pirates one and that's quite a good idea and it does give us some things that aren't available to do on a real pinball machine game but you can see that this is good if you can get on a roll you can get accumulations of scores going and you can get those modes a lot so this has plenty of style plenty of color plenty of substance and not a bad soundtrack either another high score so you can enter your name on the high score table using the keyboard which is great godsend and that for me is probably as good as I'm going to get with that particular table on this particular run so let's enter that high score and now we can press escape and having no salt we can choose the next table last table is Knight of the Demon, and Knight of the Demon is, uh, well, a nightmare table, pretty similar to Nightmare, but not really, so on these pinball games we did get lots of nightmare themed tables, included on Pinball Dreams and Pinball Fancies, so let's try out this one, and the first thing that you'll notice is an even clearer screen in the very middle of the table, and that means that there is a huge clump of ramps right at the top of it. Luckily, if we aim for the left straight away and get the tower lock, we can open the multi-ball session almost straight away. money I still prefer stones and bones and nightmare above this particular table and on the surface it would definitely appear the weakest table of the four in this game so that's why I said the other one was arguably the weakest table the pirate does have stuff going on but this has a lot going on it's just that you can't really see it at the moment and it's a pity that all of that stuff going on basically relies on ramps so that's the multiple session unlocked and again we have a huge great big hole in between the flippers and that's why I'm hitting the ball wildly at the moment just trying to aim for those uh, ramps that you can actually see on the top of that screen
particular mode, all you have to do is to shoot the ramps, and if you manage to lock the ball, you'll gain a great jackpot. I think it's also a great effect that a guy gets punched in the head and his eyeballs pop out and that just adds to the comic feel of this table doesn't take itself too seriously and when we die we manage to get lynched on a rope and that's us game over as you can see lots of flashing lights but we don't get a midnight to count up we don't get a graveyard bonus either and things like that so for my money definitely the other haunted tables on the other games are definitely better than this one Let's see if we can get any further with this and if we unlock the tower, hopefully that tower will stay unlocked until we get in there, even though we can lose a life in seconds just like that. And I guess that's one thing that puts me off most pinball games, even on the Amiga, because you can wipe out just like that. general I have mixed feelings about this game and this was released quite late in the Amiga's development, this was 1996 and most game developers had packed up and left the Amiga long before 1996 so I suppose we should be really grateful and thankful that this was released at all because they didn't really have to do that and a lot of time and a lot of effort has gone into this, the graphics, the playability, the smoothness and I'm very happy that the ball mechanics isn't too heavy even though it's slightly too heavy in the game it's not absolutely light as a feather either so they have got a few things right and I do have some great respect for this table it's just that somehow pinball dreams and pinball fantasies still for my money have the best playability on those few tables which are fantastic on those tables we've seen a few pinball games in the lemon reviews and we've seen pinball obsession and we'll be seeing a few more as well as the season goes on and this for my money is the best of them if you really love pinball games and you have an AGA machine then why not check this out in this case shooting bats it looks like with a shotgun and so that's also a tremendous thing to do and again it's quite a laugh to do that in the game Power lit, so you can definitely know that I'm going to throw it away at that point. But luckily, the tower is still lit if we should hit that ramp. And unlike many pinball games, it'll actually relaunch the ball if we die, which for my money is a tremendous, tremendous feature. And I wish many, many more pinball games on the Amiga used it. And then you won't get so frustrated dying and having to lose a ball just like that. So the tower is lit, but unfortunately, we're not going to get it in there in this particular playthrough so we will have another go at this table just to see if we can get any further with it and see if we can unlock any more modes as well because it's pretty difficult as you can see So Slam Tilt, I think you will agree, is a polished AGA game and I missed the visual tower with the ball going around in circles and spiralling down ramps but I think they did a really good job with this, it's certainly not a write-off and you can have fun playing it and the magazine reviewers definitely agreed with that as well The lowest score I could find came from the Lemon Amiga website and they're pretty tough on scores over there at Lemon Amiga, they gave this 88% 
which is very good plus, and I say it deserves that. And Amiga Magazine gave this 90%, which is definitely well deserved. And Amiga Power, yes, Amiga Power is still going in 1996. They gave this 90%, and they praised the tables and the graphics and the playability. And C Omega gave this game a great 91%. I definitely think that the extra modes on offer with the LED screen that you can see on the very top that's definitely welcome and that's a step up because it means that we can activate different things and go on treasure hunts and in this case all the flashing things at the top of the screen really enhance the experience. Finally Amiga Format gave this game the highest rating at 93% and an Amiga Format Gold award which they gave to amazing games at this period which were all really amazing for AGA machines and they'd probably worked on this game for quite a number of years to get it up to this standard and again they didn't have to release this on the Amiga they could have made this a PC release and this is for my money the last really great the really best on offer and you can see it's even got a central pin in the middle between the flippers on this particular table which is fantastic i'm not sure whether i've just unlocked that or whether it's on this table but it didn't help my play skills one little bit if you think you can improve over me which you definitely can do check out this game it's one of the greatest pinball games on the amiga thank you